because I want to get touch on a couple points here because you you mentioned too the you know pulse I'm talking about sacrifice for a moment too. If you're a sacrificer, is you know is this elf in the room? I don't know if it is or not, but like every time it's I feel like lately I've been having the stream where I'm like I always get these comments of yeah, but everyone's super down right now and all, and I'm just okay. I'm trying to think of a good way to address this, and I, I just and, and may, maybe you have some thoughts on it too. But I do. I don't know. I, I can I can just say so many times that hey, zoom out. Where are the bad macros? Stuff takes time. You know, whatever. Like delayed gratification. If you believe in the ecosystem, why does it matter right now? You're trying to sell, why, why why are you looking at the price? If you're not trying to sell right now, why, why would you try to sell? Price is all down. All that stuff. I can I can say all that in a bunch of different clever ways. However, at the end of the day, people are sitting there. Their bags down, maybe ninety percent right now. A lot of people, uh, depending on how they sacked, yeah. how much they sacked, they may have oversacked. Uh, Pulse chain launch didn't solve all their problems. How do you, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know if you're in the same position or not. I imagine no people who are, oh, yeah. who are down on the sacrifice bags. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't want to speculate. Would, on I, would, bags I, haven't even, I haven't even bothered. The only thing I've done with my Pulse X and, and Pulse has been every once in a while to make a swap uh, ratio swap between like. Uh, those and, and PHEX or um, each other, right? So like basically I've literally stuck to the Richard Hart Max coins, right? So, uh, which I, I love the name of the channel, by the way, it's a good good choice. Um, you. So, you. because I, I think, you know, it, it's going to, those are gonna be the ones that, that you want the most of, right? So I'm not gonna bother trying to flip them around, you know, I'll, I'll add more liquidity if I, or, or buy more if I want to. Uh, get more tokens, right? Because the cheaper it gets, like the more you can buy it, great. Um, but it really just, yeah, it's that long-term outlook, right? Where it, it goes to the name of my brand, Cultivate Crypto, right? Why did I call the channel Cultivate Crypto? Because we're trying to get more of the more valuable asset than the not than the less valuable asset. What's the less valuable asset? It is the US dollar over the long term, not today, not tomorrow, next week in the immediate yeah, the US dollar is always king because it's liquid. You can use it anywhere, all that stuff, right? Over the long term, it's gone to shit. All fiat currency does. Even Dogecoin, right, is better than the US dollar. And it, over the long term, it's almost that parity of a dollar, you know? And people thought that was insane to happen, but it's happening, right? So the valuable asset here, in my opinion, is Pulse Chain because that's what creates the entire layer one, right? <clears throat> and that's what's everything is built upon the number two is p hex because we it's you know hex is richard hart's baby and um that's the pulse chain sign right i would give e hex an equal treatment to that that you know they're linked no matter what like no matter how much people try to pull one side down it's just going to pull down the other side like it's you know they're going to be co stay correlated uh it's kind of like a stock split right uh in, in that regard when they when the new chain came out but um yeah just uh don't do too much sit on your hands be patient right that's a really all you, you can't really help people with that journey they just you have to be able to tell them you know consistently like the, i think the more frequently people are reminded of those things they're like oh yeah you know i'm in this with each other with you guys with the community that's why community is so important is because you know people do talk about it like a cult but um you know it's more of a self-help group in my opinion where people are and not in a bad way like in a very good way like yeah. where people you know because we can't like i talk to people on the street about crypto people look at me like i'm bad shit crazy i talk about it on youtube and people look at me like i'm a genius and it's like maybe i'm both but <laughs> you know i have no that's a great perspective I, I like to i like to see both that real life and then on youtube and everybody's like oh we, we want yeah we look to you for answers versus what are you talking about? That, that stuff died a long time ago. I love it. Well, yeah, but everybody, uh, I would say most people in the real world are armies and idiots. But um, <laughs> I mean, I say that tongue in cheek, you know, I don't truly mean that. But um, there's a lot of people out there who just don't like they don't want to understand crypto, in my opinion. Uninformed. So it's like, yeah. And, and when you do inform people like there's been a lot of people as well that, you know, on the in everyday life, you know, they say like, oh, shit, like I actually see somebody who's successful in crypto. I actually you know, you actually said it in a way that is understandable. Okay, I'll kind of give it the time of day now, you know, so there, there are those people as well. I'm just being a little, I guess, hyperbolic on that just because it is kind of like how most people are. But um, yeah, I think it's the the power of the community is really the most important where if as long as everybody has the same mindset is like, okay, like, I think the other thing is people have never seen it before, 
right? This might be everybody's first time. And they're like, I just really like this group. So I chose to jump in this ecosystem, but you know, I could have ended up in another crypto project too. And so, you know, they might question that sometimes. Okay. I haven't gone and seen if the grass is greener on the other side and stuff like that. But um, if they've truly done the research, right, they, they've broken it down. They've logically thought about it. For me, the thing that I like most about Pulse Chain is the fair launch, the, um, the sacrifice phase. So it is the first time that I've seen um, a coin launch fairly without giving its friends and families first dibs on coins, right? So you always have pre-seed, seed rounds, ICO rounds, different things like that, where the whales get formed and you never have a chance to beat one. Not Pulse Chain, as long as you have the money, there, you could see it on the blockchain. You can see the rankings of everybody and you can become a top wallet. So that's, I think, you know, in the uh, spirit of crypto and Richard Hart knows how to pump coins like very well in terms of tokenomics, right? Making a coin that is well designed in order to become scarce over time, um, like Pulse X and stuff like this. So, um, yeah, uh, if you do all the research and you look at all those things, like I don't see why this wouldn't be probably one of it's pretty much i would say right now i would say it's the top uh, opportunity outside of ethereum that i've ever seen in crypto and i've been here since you know may of 2017. yeah it, it's i think a lot of people are too are teetering on this this aspect they're looking at the community i think yeah totally on the community if it wasn't as strong or as big and as powerful and as awesome and as, as loud as it as it is uh, on twitter and otherwise air content creators everything else I think a lot of people would have already left or given up or, or sold the bottom already. Um, if, if you're still waiting to sell the bottom, I mean, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know. Maybe you're not looking around Twitter or otherwise, maybe you are looking too much, but anyways, um, it, it is I mean, insane that, though, isn't it? Like if you think about it, like, cause it, people only do that out of emotion, right? They're like, ah, oh, freak it out. I got to sell. Right. Yeah. But if they sat there and thought about it, you're like, you're insane. Like you've already held through the hardest part. Like now comes the good stuff and you're going to quit. Like it is how human emotion works most of the time. Unfortunately, uh, human nature sometimes works against a lot of people. So, so that's the, that's the piece that the, the good part coming piece is, is it just hard for people to envision when they're, when they're, we've been, and it's been a brutal market. It's been, it's been, I mean, I don't, again, this is my, I'll, I will be having completed my third cycle once this next one is done. Um, nice. But it's like, it's like, boy, I, I try not to be a prisoner of the moment, but this one has felt bad. It's felt worse oh, than yeah. I remember. It, it's felt pretty bad. I will say that someone's been around, you've been around a, a while too. So if they're teetering on like, hey, should I just get rid of this and go on and just go back to my job and just do whatever? Or should I hold off and just put it, you know, put it away, lock it away, don't look at it, don't touch it. However, I still want to stay involved in the community. And dare, dare them even think about buying more at these low, low prices. How, how do you get, is that, is that the heel? You know, if, if you were, if you were to, you know, if you believe the price will go up in the future, if you believe things will turn around and you know, all this stuff, is not going to zero getting over that hump of I I'm down, you know, 80, 90% or whatever, but these prices look pretty good. How do you get over the hump of actually saying, okay, now, now, you know, sacrificed. I didn't get, we didn't get the thousand X, whatever it was, but, but at least I get an opportunity to buy at these lower points. How, how do you make that transition? Like, how, how do you find it? How do you, only, how do you see people struggling with that? Yeah. The only way to get knowledge you don't have that you would, you'll never like, you're basically, you're coming down to experience. The only reason why you, you don't know is because you don't have the experience, right? Not talking about you, but the, the people you're, you're mentioning here, right? So how do you gain experience? You have to look to somebody who has that experience or stories from those experiences, right? Which is history. So, okay, you got to look at history. Well, crypto history, luckily, is only, you know, since Bitcoin, right? Since 2009. So, okay, um, that's not, you know, it's a lot of data to look at, but it's still not that bad. Like it's, it's early days. So you can jump in. Like a lot of people are like, oh, it's too late. Hell no. Like it's still early, right? So you can jump in. But um yeah just go and research things one of the things that i like to do to remind myself sometimes is go back and watch like there's this documentary it was called uh the rise and rise of bitcoin if you go and watch that documentary you see brian armstrong uh the head of uh, coinbase 
he's at a conference. He just looks like every other nerd there. Nothing special, right? Now he looks like Dr. Evil, you know? <laughs> but, like, um, it's just kind of funny. But, um, you know, you go back and watch that documentary. It's crazy how everybody in that time who were Bitcoiners had the same mindset of what we have now. And they turned out pretty good, right? Brian Armstrong now is basically JP Morgan of the digital age. And you have, you know, other people in there like Charlie Shrem, like he, even though he went to jail, he's still, you know, multimillionaire, like he's doing just fine. Um, Eric Voorhees, right, is still active in crypto. He's in that documentary. He's, you know, Gavin Andreessen um, in that documentary. Right? He was going to talk to the CIA and FBI on behalf of Satoshi, you know, <laughs> Satoshi just left at the time. So it's interesting because uh, the way it, you have to understand uh, like cycles, microcosms, macrocosms, all that stuff, because everything that is happening in crypto is just a ripple effect from Bitcoin. Ethereum grew in the same manner as Bitcoin did as well. And this is why when Richard Hart says like, hey, look at Hex, it did the same thing as Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's actually a good core or a good uh, example because like most crypto that's going to any crypto that's going to succeed over its you know growth cycle is going to pretty much come about the same way as Bitcoin Ethereum. There's going to be different rhymes in there, but it's going to sound relatively similar. So if you go back and look at you know the people in that history, the coins in that history, the technology actually understand why this asset class is useful you know in the world like. One thing I challenge people to do, like as kind of like a, uh, you know, critical thinking test is go and research NFTs a ton right now, because most people will tell you they're just JPEGs and they're piece of, worthless pieces of shit. Maybe some of the ones that are made currently are. But if you look at the technology, if you use some creativity, how else could you do it? Right. One of the first use cases I've seen for NFTs is um, basically to fractionalize land ownership. They've already done this in Wyoming and sold land in North Carolina with NFTs. So you start and, and one thing Andreas Antonopoulos says is crypto is not only for uh, money. Right. And so when you start thinking that way, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, shit. Like I, I did one meme the other day where it's like you talk to your friends about crypto. Nobody is listening. But then you realize it's literally one of the things that can help humanity the most in terms of its technology. And then you're just like, shit, I need to buy more. You know, and so like yeah. when you really delve that deep into it, um, I just think it's like knowledge. You just stack knowledge and the more you stack knowledge, the more conviction you can have in the space and what you're investing in and the more conviction understanding of what you have invested in, the better you're going to do. Like pretty simple equation. Yeah, just, just on the technology point, too. Yeah, it's it's as some, someone again, I have a security background and worked in tech for a long time. And crypto is how you it's how the trustless modern world trustless or trust or trusted modern world is built uh, it's identity it's not just you know, that's what you know bitcoin is the crypto money deal that's what came out oh this new paradigm a decentralization and we don't have to trust people we can set up our own miners and they can all do all that stuff with crypto and proofs but you have identity you have money you have uh security you can encrypt stuff it's like crypto is the foundation of like the modern world uh whether it's trustless or not so um, yeah. yeah, if you look if you look around, you're like, you know, a lot of stuff, all the computers you're using, you know, a lot of, a lot of the things are keeping your, your data safe and otherwise you're using crypto. Money is just another form of expressing, uh, you know, the things we need to do in the modern world. So it's it's uh, it's, it's not I don't think it's I think it's uh, it has staying power, crypto, cryptography, cryptocurrency, staying power, I do believe. Um, yeah. And I like that quote from Bobby Hexelrod there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's, Sentiment. you know, I, I, I try to. I, you know, I try to ignore, I've muted so many people on crypto Twitter. I, I try to, I know all the talking points. I know why, you know, hex, hex bad, all this stuff. I, I get it. And I, I'd like to take this from crypto sloth too, of just like, hey, I get it. I just don't want that to be in my life right now. I prefer positivity. I prefer all this stuff. I can only meditate yes. so much per day. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't, I, I know the points. I, I know it. I know my convictions. I know where they are. And I'm going to stick to that. However, I do like objective discussion. I do like hearing, I, I follow people who, don't say very nice things uh, just because I think they have something interesting to say about it that can inform right. me better and give me a better uh, perspective on it too. Um, but just I, 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 what I do see as far as community talk, and again, you know, I do a lot of interviews and talk to people, stream a lot these days, especially, I was trying to synthesize the community sentiment of people who had sacked and they're down like everyone else is right now. And they're just wondering, should they buy more? And, you, and I love that you touched on the experience part and just uh, seeing that 
And just know, using that to navigate your way through this. And it, it could be the difference between making and not making it. Uh, for better, for worse, whatever decision you make, at least the decision is yours. Um, and, and I think that's, that's, that's the empowering thing about crypto too. Taking it back to crypto being around us in the modern world, crypto is an empowering technique. Uh, it's, it's a tool. And, um, and boy, I hope, I hope we all uh, are, are buying our own islands one day. I'll say that. I hope we all succeed. Don't know if we're going to, but I certainly hope so. Um, yeah. Uh, and like that is what also makes me bullish on Pulse Chain for anybody who is buying now or anybody who's new now. Like they get a better chance than everybody who's sacked at the fair rate, right? Everybody's sacked at the same time. Like you got, like everybody who's sacked can't really be crying all that much because they probably would have done some shit with their money at that time where they could have lost in the bear market. So by sacking, you basically had a forced huddle. So I, I don't really think there's much room for crying in crypto just like you know the, the quote from tom hanks and there's no crying in yeah. baseball same thing you know but like yeah, the, the the what else would you have done with it argument uh, it, i think there's a lot of there's something to that too yeah. yeah so i think that's important for the people who are currently hodling it's like yeah you know like you sacked at a fair rate that everybody else had a chance to sack at you held it this long buy more right you're good and then anybody who's new fucking like even better now all of a sudden you have a better chance to get in than everybody who's already in and right if there if everybody who's already in is looking towards you know a hundred a thousand a ten thousand x maybe you get crazy ass more x's who the hell knows but like um i would say like even you know a hundred x for most people will absolutely change their lives so um you know even if it's just like a thousand dollars you know and you're like okay i'm just gonna take a gamble here on this pulse chain shit i don't know put in a thousand dollars and then I'll just close my eyes for a year, you know, and see what happens in two years. Right. Um, yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of people say they can handle the volatility. They can handle the roller coaster, but then like when the ride's halfway through, they're like, get me off of here. You know? So it's just, you know, like, Hey, should have read yeah. the rules when you got on. They hit the stop button, but you're hanging upside down. Don't, don't, don't stop at that point. Don't, <laughs> uh, don't, don't get yourself into a mess. Right. Uh, I'll take, 